Today's lesson is going to be on Venn diagrams. We're carrying on with probability. Now you've done Venn diagrams before, um, but we're going to introduce probability into them now because we have just sorted things into prob uh, into Venn diagrams. We haven't considered the probability attached with it. So we're going to look today at interpreting data given in a Venn diagram, finding probabilities from a Venn diagram, and understanding the language of sets, including intersections, unions, and confluence is a bit of a terminology that goes along with this, which um, it's not like you're going to be tested on what it means, but you just got to be familiar with it. So if a question talks about it, you understand what they're talking about. So let's, uh, let's begin. So we've got a Venn diagram. This Venn diagram has two sets. One is for brown hair, one is for glasses, and obviously there's an overlap in the middle for people with both brown hair and glasses and there's the box around the outside where we do not have any brown hair or glasses so here's the members of the science club if we click on each person it'll put them in the right place so this guy's got blonde hair no glasses so he doesn't go in either of the circles he's on the outside brown hair uh, not brown hair or glasses, just glasses, just brown hair, neither, just glasses, neither. This guy's got both brown hair and glasses, and this last person has got just brown hair. Okay, so that's where all the people go for the Venn diagram. Right, so let's put in the numbers of people for each section. So the people with just brown hair, there's three of them. There's one guy with brown hair and glasses. There are two people with just glasses. And there's one, two, three, four people with neither. Okay, so this is the sort of thing we've done before with Venn diagrams. So hopefully this isn't new. Okay, and like I said, we've got three people with brown hair, but not glasses. One person with both. Two people with glasses but not brown hair, and four people with neither. How many children have brown hair all together? So it's this, these three people. There's also this one person, so it's four all together. We've got to be careful. Lots of people just see the brown hair, read the three off it, put it straight in, and not consider this one person in the middle. How many people wear glasses? The obvious wrong answer is two, because people just look glasses and see two. But this is one person as well, so that's three. And how many people in the science club altogether? Three, four, five, six, and those four, that makes ten. Okay, so that's, that's what we've done before with Venn diagrams, just sorting things into it and counting how many things go in each place. If we start thinking about probability, it um, it's not that big of a step. If you remember Venn diagrams from before, and if you've done the work from yesterday, so um, we want to use this Venn diagram from one from the four before to find probabilities. Find the probability that if we pick someone at random, they will have brown hair. So we've got to remember what we said. There are four people with brown hair, three, four people, and there were 10 people all together. So four out of those 10 people have brown hair, which means the probability of picking one at random is four out of 10. That's why fractions are much easier than decimals of probability, because you can think of it as this many out of this many. How many people wear glasses, or the probability that we pick a random person who wear glasses? So there's two three people wear glasses out of the still 10 people in the science club three out of ten okay. so that's how we can use a venn diagram to get probabilities it's nice and straightforward if we just take it step by step and if we use fractions okay so now we're going to talk about some language and notation with venn diagrams it's going to look a little bit strange and get a little bit confusing, but all you've got to remember is that these are just symbols, and you're not usually asked to use the symbols yourself just to be able to 
understand what they mean if they come up in questions. So here we've got a bunch of numbers in a Venn diagram. It's group A and there's group B and we've got the whole set. So I just used the word set there and it's because a set is a collection of objects. All right. So the people who had brown hair were a set. The people who wore glasses were a set. A is a set. B is a set. If you think about maths class, there's different sets of people. Sets don't have to be uh, based on ability. It's just different ways of grouping people. So here are some number cards arranged into sets. So these are just number cards. Set A contains 1, 3, 4, and 8. You can see the 1, 3, 4, and the 8. They're in the A circle. So if we don't want to write out all the words set A contains this, 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 and this, we can use this notation. We can say A equals these funny brackets. And then if you just list the numbers with commas in between them and then close the brackets, that's a quicker way of writing it. Okay, so if a question mentions this, you should know what it means. The universal set has got this symbol. That's the Greek letter epsilon. It's a, quite a strange letter, so sometimes they use this letter, which is omega, or a funny looking U like this for universal, stands for universal. They're a bit easier to draw and make a bit more sense, but sometimes you might see this one as well. Okay, so that's the universal set, that's everything. That's everything inside the entire box. So in this case, the universal set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's all those numbers. Same brackets as before. List all the numbers, preferably in numerical order, and close the brackets. So this new Venn diagram at the bottom, instead of all the objects being in there, all the number cards, it's now saying how many objects for each one. So there are two things in this section, two in this section, three in this section, and one in the outside. It helps to do probabilities. Otherwise, you start looking at some numbers and you start thinking there are seven things on the outside, but actually there's just one. It's just a card that says seven on it. Card is selected at random. Find the probability it belongs to set A. So set A, how many objects does that have? Two, four, four sets. How many objects in total? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's four out of eight. Now you can simplify that to a half, but I wouldn't recommend doing it unless the question asks you to simplify your answer. This makes so much more sense. There are four things in set A out of set, out of eight things. P bracket A is another way of saying probability that something's in A. The previous question said, what is the probability that someone wears glasses? Lots of words. It's much shorter if you can just write this. Probability of A. Okay. Here we've got, so the universal set, that's whole numbers between 1 and 10. So here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. R, so this circle, is the numbers that are 5 or less. And S, this circle is the factors of 12. We're going to sort the cards into the Venn diagram. Now, the way to do this is to, first of all, just pick a number and see if it satisfies the different things. If you just start putting the numbers less than 5 in the R circle, you're going to have to move some of them later because some of them go in this part and some of them go in this part. So it's easier if we look at 1 and think, is it less than 5? Yes. Is it a factor of 12? Yes. So it goes in the middle. 2. Is it less than 5? Yes. Is it a factor of 12? Yes. Factor of 12, number that divides into 12, exactly. So 3, is it less than 5? Yes. Is it a factor of 12? Yes. 4, it is 5 or less. It is a factor of 12. 5, is it 5 or less? Yes. Is it a factor of 12? No. So it goes in this section. because This is the section where it's 5 or less, but not a factor of 12. 6. 6 is not 5 or less. Well, actually, none of these now are 5 or less. Uh, and then, is it a factor of 12? Yes. 7 is not 5 or less. It is not a factor of 12, so that goes on the outside. 
8 is not 5 or less, not a factor of 12. 9, not 5 or less, not a factor of 12. And 10, not 5 or less, not a factor of 12. So that's where they all go. Okay. So that's how to put things in there. You might get a question that looks like that. It might tell you what's in the universal set. You might not be so lucky sometimes. They might not give you a list of them all. You might just be expected to know what that means. Okay, we've got the numbers 1 to 10 to put in stuff. And the ones that are less than 5 go here. The ones that are factors of 12 go here. The ones that are both go in the middle. And the ones that are neither go on the outside. Now, they've changed the number cards into how many things were there. And now we've got to work out the probabilities. So, the probability that something is part of group R. The probability of picking a number at random and it's 5 or less. Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 things out of, there are 10 things in total, so 5 out of 10. I'm not going to bother simplifying that because that makes so much more sense. Probability of something being in group S, or the probability of something being a factor of 12. There's these 4 and this one, so there's 5 out of 10 again. So that's how to do some probabilities using some of this set notation. Right, so a few more words. Um, I've started saying the middle bit, both bits, the outside bit, and stuff like that. They've got proper names. Okay, so the bit in the middle is the intersection. It means A and B. So when something satisfies both criteria, when something is in both sets, we say it's in the intersection. It's easy enough to remember because the word intersection means sort of where things cross. Union is just everywhere except the box. Basically, it's both of those things, both of those circles and the middle bit. It's called the union. Think about um, a union is when things join. So imagine A and B join or get married, and this is A stuff, this is B stuff, this is both their stuff. The union has brought it all together. This is now all of their stuff. Okay, so that's how to remember that one. And complement means not. So the complement of A means not A. So you can see that everything is coloured in apart from the A circle. Okay, so intersection is the middle bit where things meet, where they join. Union, that's all the bits apart from the box. That's everything they own combined or everything in both groups combined. And complement means not. It's everything except that. Right, so let's check we know what this means. So answer the question by dragging the correct number cards into the box. Which objects are in the intersection of A and B? Intersection is where they cross. So that is 3 and that is 8. complement of B, so everything that is not in B. So B contains all of these five, so it's just the one, the four, and the seven I want. One, four, seven. And what is not in the union of A and B? So the union would contain one, four, three, eight, six, two, five. Not in the union, that's seven. So you've got to be careful sometimes they put that word not in there just to try to trick you. Check and understand what, you, what you're doing. Okay, so one last thing. We're going to have a look at a three-set Venn diagram. I've looked at these before, but not with probabilities. So the only difference is probabilities. You can click on a number to see what it represents. So you can see 40 people didn't use any facilities. 34 used them all. 15 used just the gym. 18 used the gym and the pool, but not the sauna, because you can see this 18 is in the overlap of gym and pool, but it's not in the circle of sauna. Okay, so that's what they mean. So, someone's chosen at random again. Find the probability that they were just in the pool. So, those 30 people there just used the pool. 
So that's 30 out of 211 people in the club. They didn't tell me that 211 in the question. I just have to add up all these numbers to figure out what it was. Not even going to bother seeing if that simplifies. And we're right. Someone has chosen at random. Find the probability that they use the pool. So the pool circle, that's this one. So this, this 30, this 40, this 34, and this 18, they all use the pool. So we've got to add these up. 70, 104, 122, I think, out of 211. Okay, okay. so you've got to be careful. A lot of people might get that wrong. Probability they use the pool, they just put 30 out of that. You've got to be careful of the words because it says just used it or only used it or use the pool but not these things. Right, so another member is chosen at random. Find the probability that they use the pool. Sorry, that they use the gym and the sauna but not the pool. The gym and the sauna but not the pool. It's these 19 people here, isn't it? Because that's the overlap of gym and sauna but not the pool. Because you can't include these 15, because they didn't use the sauna. You can't include these 15, they didn't use the gym. You can't include these 34, because they used the pool as well. It's only these 19 people. So 19 out of 211. Okay. And one more. Find the probability they didn't use the sauna. So all these people in the circle use the sauna. These people, these 15, these 18, these 30, and these 40, they didn't use a sauna. So we've got to add up those four numbers. So 40, 70, uh, 88, and that's going to be 103. Use a calculator for these, I don't mind, uh, because the point is understanding which numbers to use, not just adding them up. Okay, so that 15, they used the gym only. They didn't use a sauna. These 18 use the gym and the pool, not the sauna. These 30 use the pool only, not the sauna. These 40 didn't use anything, not the sauna at all. And all these people, in some combination, use the sauna. So it's those 103. Right, that's everything from that lesson. So what I want you to do is have a go at the my maths homework attached to this. Okay, it is just going to ask you some things that are... Um, from this lesson. I've done enough examples within this lesson that you should know what to do, but if you don't, then just ask in the chat and I'll help you out with the homework. Okay, and that's everything for today.